a lot of you have been asking what programming language should I learn? And this is a really, really big question. I mean, it's an important question to know, especially if you're starting out as a software developer, or even if you're already an experienced software developer and you wanna know what is the next programming language you should learn or what you should be learning right now. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about not specifically a programming language, although I'll give you some ideas, stay around till the end of the video if you wanna hear about the specific languages I recommend, but I wanna to talk to you more importantly about the, the idea behind this question and why this question is not as important as you think. Hey, John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. So let's talk about this. What programming language should you learn? If you're looking to start a career in software development or get a job, you know, what's the most beneficial one? Well, here's the thing, and here's something that I'm gonna tell you guys that are beginners. Some of you that are already experienced, you already know this, guys, right? If you're a beginner starting out, one of the things that you need to know is that most programming languages are very, very similar, okay? And what I mean by that is that you know in my in the course of my career as a software developer i've probably learned oh i don't know maybe like 10 programming languages and i've taught courses on pluralsight but i've got a bunch of pluralsight courses if you don't believe me all right you know or you know wh whatever anyway i've taught courses on java on android development on ios on net development using c sharp dart language and Go, Go is one of my more popular courses, uh, but just a ton of different languages. I, I've pretty much done almost all programming language, all mainstream programming languages, and if you gave me a new programming language tomorrow, I could pretty much program in it. It's not because I'm a fucking genius. I'm not a fucking genius. The reason why is because most of the constructs of most programming languages are similar because that logic, that high-level logic, is similar. Now, why do I tell you this? Because I don't want you to get so hung up and caught up on the idea of, I need to learn this programming language or this is the best programming language. And at the same time, what I don't want you to do is think you need to learn five different programming languages, right? I coach a lot of beginners. I, I talk about this a lot. I've got a book called The Complete Software Developer Career Guide. By the way, if you are a beginner, you're probably gonna wanna check this out. I'm not really trying to push the book, I'm just saying, like this is a pretty thick book that tells you how to how to get a job and become a software developer and even for experienced developers how to move ahead in your career and i talk about languages in there and i talk about a lot of what i'm going to tell you here but but here's the thing okay a lot of people that i coach what they're trying to do is what well, uh, one of the big stumbling blocks that they get caught up on is they spend a lot of time trying to figure out what language to learn so they're they're never going anywhere and they're kind of bouncing around and then another big stumbling block that they that they run into is that they try to learn like three or four different languages at the same time and they're switching between all these technologies and languages and the problem with that is that you don't go deep enough and so you don't get a real understanding it'd be better for you to just pick one programming language go really deep with it become skilled become good at algorithms okay become good at the, the most important skill for a software developer, which is to take, at least technical skill, which is to be able to take a problem, okay, a big problem, to break it down into smaller problems and its component parts, and to keep breaking it down until it translates directly into lines of code. When you can do that, okay, when you can do that as a software developer, you can do anything. You can write any code, you can write any program, you can be completely competent. All someone has to show you is what the problem is and you have to have the researching skills, of course, to figure out how to bridge that gap. But once you know that, you can break it down, you can use your programming language to write the code, you know, to, to basically break down the problems to smaller and smaller. And that's a skill that you're gonna develop, okay? But you're only gonna develop that skill if you're going deep with the programming language, which is gonna require you to be focused and concentrated and to do deliberate practice, another important keyword here, in that, in that programming language. Basically, okay, it depends on your goals, okay? I would not, okay, and I've done videos like this on my other channel, but I would not learn a complex language if you're a beginner like C++. C++ is a great language, it's still in use today. A lot of people get upset when I talk about C++. I used to love C++, okay? I read all the books, you know, so I'm a big Scott Myers fan, Effective C++, Effective STL, believe me, I've been there, I've done that, Boost Libraries, come on. <laughs> Let's go back to MFC days. Yes, I'm there with you guys, I've done it, all right? But here's the thing, C++ is difficult. 
It's going to be discouraging. You don't need to know all this stuff in order to be proficient today. What I usually advise people is to learn some language that you're gonna use in mobile development so you can make your own app, so you can put your apps in the app store, you can do some kind of entrepreneurial thing, and you can build up a portfolio, which is one of the most important things. You could do web apps as well, right? But there's a lot more to the stack to learn, and that's why something like if you learn some Java and you can do Android development, or you learn something like Swift and do iOS development, or heck, C Sharp is probably my favorite language of all time. I spent the most time working in that language. And you can do Android and iOS development and web development and everything in C Sharp. So C Sharp is really a good one. Java, similarly, is, is also really good. Another good one is Python today, right? Python is, is popular, but, but it depends on the objective, okay? So if your objective is to get a job, okay, and to make a lot of money, then the market tells you what programming language you want to learn and also your demographic area, okay? So, I mean, you gotta use your, your brain, your common sense here. If you wanna make a lot of money, but you're geographically isolated into a small city, okay? When I lived in Boise, Idaho, okay? I, the big employer there for tech, for technology, was mostly there was Micron and there was, there was HP, okay? But HP was pretty much the biggest one, right? So. I had to learn, like if I wanted to get a job there and I wanted to stay in Boise, Idaho, yes, there were some, some options I had, but I had to learn the technologies that HP was using at the time. At that time, it was mostly firmware, so it's mostly C and a bastardized version of C++, okay? That's what it was. Now, I learned some .NET and Java development uh, there because it was, you know, but, but primarily that was my bread and butter, right? Embedded systems, C and C++, okay? So you got to think about this, all right? And that's where the jobs were that paid the most money. So if you really want to maximize your chances, that's what you're going to do. You're going to do the research in the area. Now, if you're willing to relocate and you're willing to go to high, if you want to make as much money as possible, you want to get a job in San Francisco, in San Jose, in New York City, doing financial trading type of software, okay? Being a quant or something like that. Again, big money opportunities. Now you're talking about, okay, what languages are they using there, okay? And it's different, different technologies, right? You wanna get a job at Apple, you probably need to learn Swift and C++ is, is gonna be helpful as well, especially if you wanna work on the underlying programs that they, they create to actually create or work on the Swift language itself, right? Uh, I'm assuming, I don't know, maybe they use Objective-C or Swift to do that but now, but but they bootstrap that, I guarantee you, with C++, so I would, I would, I would bet on this. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I just want you to understand kind of the thinking behind this. And I, I want to equip you, again, part of the things that we do at Simple Programmer and that I want to do for you is not equip you with this, the technical skills, the, the blanket answer. I want to give you the thinking skills to be able to figure this shit out on your own because that's what's going to be critical in your career and your life, okay? So that's why I'm going through this process, by the way. If you want to get a job in one of those cities, then see what technologies. Now, uh, with, with that said, uh, like I said, I'm going to reiterate this point and I'm going to just kind of seal the deal with this and then I'll tell you some languages in a second what I would recommend today just based on the market, okay? Just because I know that some of you guys, that's all you want to hear, but I'm making you wait till the end, so haha. If you learn a programming language and you're proficient and you're good at it, let's say that you pick C Sharp, okay? And you're good at it and you can write algorithms and you can write web apps and you can, you know, do whatever you need to do. Basically, that, that skill of taking the big problem, breaking it down into pseudocode and break it down into code eventually, then it doesn't really matter because if you want to learn another programming language, you'll be able to do it. And if you get, if you apply for the right jobs, right, they're, they're going to say, hey, write this pseudocode on the whiteboard. You're going to need that skill set, okay? I promise you that. That's a, that's a different video. So subscribe to the channel, by the way, because I will do a video on whiteboard interviewing and, and, and coding interviews and all that uh, stuff. And we also have some resources on simpleprogrammer.com that can help you specifically with that, okay? But here, here's the thing, okay? Basically, if you apply for a good job, they're not gonna care so much what programming language, even though they say it, okay? Because they know that you can pick that up if you're a good programmer. So there, a lot of times I've been at job interviews where they've said whatever programming language you feel most, most comfortable in, write this program or do this thing, okay? Because they know that and a lot of high level developers know that. So that's kind of an indication also whether you're in a place where the job might not be so good as if they don't have that awareness. I, I, hopefully I've convinced you to understand that it doesn't really matter that much. The only really considerations is gonna be the market. That's gonna be pr your primary if you're looking to make money and you're, and you're looking to get a job as soon as possible, which so you're gonna, you're gonna look at the market. Now, with that said, let's look at the market, okay? One of the most popular things, and I can tell you because I run one of the biggest programming blogs 
okay on the on the internet at least you know uh, that's not a big corporate one okay at simple programmer and so i get the traffic and i can see what posts do well and i can see what people are searching for and, and whatnot and i can tell you python is highly desired right now okay python's a great language i love it i love how beautiful it is it's an aesthetic language i'm an aesthetic person i love aestheticism okay some people call that vain but Anyway, Python is good. Python is definitely very popular right now, at least the time that I'm recording this video. So that's one that you really might strongly consider. People are looking for that. There's a lot of opportunities in Python because of it's being used a lot in machine learning. It's being used in kind of artificial intelligence and this whole, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, image recognition and all this, this, this kind of stuff. There's a lot of libraries on that. In fact, my, my good buddy, uh, Pi, that runs runs a site called Pi Image Search. You might want to check that out as well. Okay, number two, I've already talked about this one, and I'm still betting on this one, which is C Sharp. And the reason why C Sharp I like so much is because it is so cross-platform. It's backed by Microsoft, and it is really a good language. It's a really good language to learn. It's become a little bit more bloated, but it's elegant. It's very elegant if you understand how to use Lambda expressions and you understand all of that, those, those intricacies of language, you can write some very, very elegant code and you can pretty much do anything. You can write for any platform. You can use the Xamarin framework that Microsoft now owns, okay? And in fact, I taught my first courses on Pluralsight on Xamarin. It was called MonoTouch for Android and MonoDroid or Mo Mono, Mono, I can't forget, remember the name. But anyway, uh, C Sharp is still good. And there is, and then the other thing about C Sharp is because it's Microsoft, there's going to be always big enterprise companies that are going to be using that as their primary development stack, right? The Microsoft technologies and the Microsoft languages. Other ones that, that I would recommend, Java is always going to be a big enterprise one as well, right? And, and again, you know, you've got the C++ is, is out there, but I would honestly, if I were starting out today, I would probably be doing Python. That's probably what I would be doing, either that or C Sharp. Those would probably be my top two choices. And again, different people are gonna have different opinions, okay? But that's my opinion. And again, like I said, it doesn't matter. If you wanna learn Elixir, go ahead, learn Elixir. You're gonna find plenty of opportunities and plenty of jobs, and you're gonna be able to translate those skills over as well. You wanna learn Go, that's gonna be fine as well. I love Go, it's a great language. There's a lot of good languages out there. Okay, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope that you found this educational and informative. If you did, uh, you know, click that subscribe button, go check out Simple Programmer, and we, we've got a lot of stuff for you. Also, we've got a nice membership area where, you know, if you want people to answer your questions, you need some help and stuff, uh, you can check that out. Again, go to simpleprogrammer.com and, and you'll find that. And make sure you click subscribe and, you know, give a thumbs up or like if you like this video. And I will talk to you next time. Take care.